from ancient times. There have been various cultures or civilizations who saw themselves as the center of the region or of the world, and uh, hence the norm setters against whom everyone else was compared. This could be the Middle Kingdom syndrome in China, where they said all Chinese people within the Sinosphere are civilized and everyone else is a barbarian. And it is their job to lift themselves up to Confucian values and then they'll be accepted as a civilized race or a civilized country. Now that is the same pattern that one sees today with the West as a whole and in particular the Anglosphere, who see themselves as the creators and custodians of a certain set of values. So they call them enlightenment values, they call them Judeo-Christian values, they call them European values, they call them Protestant values and work ethic. There's various labels. But uh, what's common to them is a feeling that this is the pinnacle of human thought, philosophy, civilization. And those who do not conform to these values are inherently inferior. Perhaps they can be coached or incentivized or punished into adopting these values, but until they are, they are inferior and it's a very convenient stick with which to beat other cultures. Because this way you can continue your colonial era economic relations with supposedly inferior cultures and countries without the moral dilemma of what if we are the bad guys. Because you're spreading good things, you're spreading democracies, uh, spreading human rights, you're spreading enlightenment values. How can we be the bad guys if we're spreading all of these to these ignorant savages? What we now call Western values, what are essentially Protestant Reformation values. And uh, it's, it's very amusing to see how they claim that oh, these uh, enlightenment values and Western values and Judeo-Christian values uh, are universal. They weren't even applied universally by them for most of their history. That did Judeo-Christian principles not apply when you were enslaving people in, in Africa and transporting them to uh, the New World, to the Americas? Did they not apply when uh, uh, Columbus and uh, the conquistadors went to uh, what's now Latin America and raped and enslaved uh, the locals uh, uh, for the glory of Christ? That's also your Judeo-Christian values. Uh, 70 years ago, you were rounding up uh, uh, Jewish people, Roma people, homosexuals, and uh, sending them to death camps in uh, in the heart of Europe. Was that not an expression of these values? If so, then you need to disown these values and create something new and positive, not claim that, oh, uh, because a certain side won a couple of wars, that means their values are superior, or if a certain country is rich today, that means its values are superior. The values that it showed during its rise are very different to the ones that it expects of others. I would argue that these values are not even applied today within their countries. It's just weaponized in order to keep other countries in line. But is the US fully democratic? No, you know, we've seen that with various uh, obstacles to, to voting with uh, gerrymandering, which uh, creates constituencies based on the whims of uh, the parties in power, with the uh, extension of equal rights to all take, only taking place in the 60s. It's very funny when countries that were not fully democratic until a couple of decades ago now act as the custodians of democracy or uh, human rights for that matter.